Okay, so now we're in Unit 15, which uh, covers Chapter 8. We're going to focus first on Section 8.1, which deals with hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing, um, it's the use of statistics to determine the probability that a given hypothesis is acceptable or not. A definition for a hypothesis, it's, it's a claim or statement about a property of a, a population that's under study. And so an example could be the following. The average time spent by community college students studying for a quiz is four hours. The population is community college students and the claim is either acceptable or not. Further data must be collected to determine whether the claim can be accepted or rejected. And in this uh, type of problem, we're not proving the claim. We're just collecting data um, just to determine if uh, using that data, there's a high chance that we will reject or accept that claim. So um, the first step in this uh, section is to understand how to state a claim. So for example, uh, we're gonna, let's make a claim about the population of all dogs in Southern California. So the claim could be this. There could be numerous claims. One claim could be the average age of all dogs in Southern California is greater than six years. Um, another example, let's make a claim about college students. The average time spent working by full-time uh, college students per week is 20 hours. And then let's make a random claim about uh, something that we're interested in studying. Let's say you're a fan of the MBA and you uh, your claim is that the average age of um, all NBA players is less than 27 years. We'll put down. So those are examples of claims. And then what we would have to do next is to collect a sample of data and then use that data with a particular test to decide if we reject or not reject the claim. So the beginning part of the process is we have to find what's called the null hypothesis. It's denoted as H sub zero or H naught. Not is another word for zero. Um, I prefer H naught. Um, it is a precise statement about a population parameter, in this case, the mu, and it always has the equal sign. So an example, the average age of a college professor is 50. It can be written using the symbols below. So we have to write down H naught and then we write mu, the average, is equal to 50. The alternative hypothesis is denoted as H sub 1. Um, it is a statement that contradicts the null hypothesis and it contains uh, one of the three symbols, either the not equal to, the less than, or the greater than signs. Um, so in this uh, statement, we have the average age of college professors is not 50. So we would write H sub one uh, is mu not equal to 50. So when we uh, set up a problem, we always need to write both hypotheses. So let's uh, read through the statement. So write both hypotheses down in the following manner with the claim. And we have to designate uh, whether H naught or H sub one is the claim. And typically it's, it'll be H sub one, but occasionally it'll be H naught. So if the claim is the average age of college professors is not 50, then write claim next to the statement. So we would write H naught above H sub one, uh, mu is not 50, 
And remember, H naught is always will always be the have the equal sign. So mu is 50. The claim is mu is not 50. Now we're going to work out a couple of other examples here. So they want us to find the claim H naught and H sub 1 for the following statements. The average, so this is our claim. The average cost of a breakfast burrito is less than 680. So that's telling us that mu, the average, is less than 680. That's the claim. Um, since it's a less than, it has to be H sub 1. H naught always has the equal to 680. The average time spent studying for the final exam in Math 165, we'll say a Math 165 course, is greater than 20 hours. Well, our claim is that the average time spent studying for this class is greater than 20. That's the claim. That's also H sub 1. H naught is mu equal to 20. And then finally, we have the average time spent at a graduation ceremony is three hours. Now, in this situation, our claim will be H naught because it's saying is means equal to. So mu is equal to three. That's the claim. That's H naught. So whenever the claim is H naught, to write down H sub one, we just put not equal to. So the first step in hypothesis testing is to state a claim and then determine H naught and H sub one. And then uh, they must be written in such a manner that if H naught is true, then H sub one is false and vice versa. So once we set up our claim and we determine H naught and H sub one, we then perform a statistical test. Well, a statistical test uses sample data to make a decision. So we collect data from a random sample of the population and we use that data to make a decision to decide if the null hypothesis H naught is rejected. And I'll just put or not rejected. So remember the outcome of our claim will always be or not the claim, but the outcome of our test will always be we reject H naught or we do not reject H naught. Now we have some probabilities we need to define. Alpha, that's the chance of committing what's called a type one error. Um, so this is an error that we will try to avoid. To do this, we're gonna set alpha equal to a low probability. So. Um, this type of probability occurs if the null hypothesis is rejected when it is true. Um, so this is an error that must be avoided at all costs. Having this error occur is like sending an innocent person to jail, right? Typically we want that. It does happen unfortunately, but we want that probability to be minimized as much as possible. Another type of probability is called beta. And we're not gonna really deal too much with beta in our class, but beta is the chance of committing what's called a type two error. Uh, this occurs when the null hypothesis is accepted, but it's actually false. This type of error can be minimized by ensuring that you have a large sample size uh, to avoid any differences um, and um, it it'll, it'll just will reduce uh, this type of error. So we're going to look at an example here of a chart that we're going to follow and just to see when we come up with these types of outcomes. So we're going to have the two columns represents an actual condition and this column here represents the result of a verdict from a, from a jury. So let's look at the first column here. Let's say, so imagine you're, this is kind of the structure you're gonna use when you perform your test. But um, let's say that the person is guilty. Okay. If the verdict from the jury is that the person's guilty, well, that's gonna be a good result because you have a guilty person 
and the outcome of uh, the deliberations in the jury came back with guilty. That's a good result. But if um, the person is guilty and the result of the verdict is not guilty, that's going to be a type 2 error. That's akin to um, or akin to um, letting a guilty person go free. And that, that happens quite a bit in our system, our uh, criminal justice system, but that's because we want to minimize the chance of sending someone who's innocent to jail, which, which would be the type one error. So for eight sub one, let's say the person is not guilty, but the jury convicts this person as being guilty, then that's a type one error. And um, finally, if the person is not guilty and the jury comes back with not guilty, that's a good result. So when we perform our hypothesis testing, our goal is to minimize the type one error and to try to avoid the type two error by having large sample sizes. And we're shooting for uh, the good results in our test. Now this alpha that we mentioned here, it's a probability. Since we're going to be working with uh, some distributions, alpha will be represented as a tail area. So if we have a normal distribution, as in this example, then the shaded region of the tail area, that's called the critical region. So this shaded area here is the critical region. The unshaded region is called the non-critical region. And the values that separate these two regions, that's called the critical value. I, I labeled it as CV. So when you um, have to decide what type of tail test do we have or what, what side will the tail be on, you always look at H sub 1. If you have mu is less than, think of this as an arrow, some numerical value, that means you will have a left tail test. Think of this as pointing to the left. Now, if we have mu, if you look at h sub 1 and it has mu not equal to a value, there's no direction here. So then we're going to take alpha and split it in two. Half of alpha will be a left tail, half of alpha will be a right tail. So we have in this situation a two-tailed test. And then uh, our third type of test is we could have a right tail test. Well, in that case, we examine h sub 1, we'll see Think once again of this inequality as an arrow. Mu is greater than some value. That means it's pointing to the right. We have a right tail test. Alpha is not split only. The only time you split alpha is when it's a two tail test. And during the course of our test, our statistical test, if we have a test point that falls in this critical region, then we reject H naught. Otherwise, if it falls in the unshaded region, we do not reject H naught. Okay, so let's kind of let's look at another example. Um, right now, we're just kind of setting up the information. We're not going to learn about uh, the actual test that we're going to use until later videos. So it says here, draw and shade in the tails uh, for the, the. I'll put tail for the following statement, the average time it takes to shop on Black Friday is greater than six hours. Write CV for the critical value. These values will be determined later on in the unit. Well, we'll go ahead and set up our claim. It's saying that the average is greater than six. That's the claim. When it has a greater than sign, H sub one. H naught always has the equal to sign. So H naught is mu equal to 6. And since it's pointing to the right, we have a right tail test. And the critical value, once again, separates this right tail from the unshaded region. So um, uh, just kind of reviewing things. A claim is a statement about a property of a population. It can be H naught or an H sub 1 statement. So we're given some examples here. We want to write out H naught and H sub 1, and then also just state if it's right, left, or two-tailed. 
So here's our claim. It says a Lepidopterus, that's a person who studies butterflies, claims that the average distance traveled by a monarch butterfly or by monarch butterflies during a migration is greater than 2,000 miles. Mu is greater than 2,000. That's the claim. H sub 1. H naught is mu equal to 2,000. This right here, right tail test. An educational researcher claims that the average time general Z students or generation Z students, that's our current uh, youthful generation that's entering the colleges. Students spend watching educational videos on YouTube is 4.5 hours per week. Um, so in this uh, situation, we're saying that mu is 4.5, that's the claim. It's will be an H naught statement. Whenever H naught is mu equal to a value, H sub 1 will be mu not equal to. And whenever it's not equal to, that means we have no direction. So we have a two-tailed test. And then an institutional researcher at a local community college estimated the average time for a student to transfer from a community college is less than six years. Well, the claim is mu less than six. That's our claim, H sub one. H naught is mu equal to six. And since our inequality points to the left, it's left tailed. And uh, we'll conclude our video here. These are just some of the key definitions that we're gonna need to be aware of in order to perform hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing will encompass chapters 8, 9, and 10. Have a good evening.